Almost every day we can see the consequences of the climate crisis. But while it may appear to be happening gradually over time, sea level rise could be one of its most devastating side effects. As global temperatures rise, so do the temperatures of the oceans. In fact, they've absorbed 90% of the excess heat in the planet's atmosphere. And as water is heated, it expands. In the last 30 years, scientists have observed a steady increase in the average height of the entire ocean surface. But the dominant source of rising sea levels is coming from melting ice. Currently, we have about 200,000 glaciers and store the water amount that would be enough to raise the sea level about 40 centimeters. My name is Guðfinna Aðalgeistóttir and I study glaciers. Glaciers are located in areas where there is so much precipitation in the form of snow that it doesn't melt away during the summer. So then in the autumn there is some snow left and then the new winter snow comes on top of it. And this happens for several years and then the snow compacts and becomes much, much denser and becomes into a glacier. But the warming climate is disrupting this process. What we do here is that we drill about 10 meters into the surface of the glacier and put a wire into it. And then as the surface is melting, more and more of the wire gets exposed so we can measure how much has been melting during the summertime. Yeah, again, 2.30. And it was 186. Sometimes uh, the, the glacier retreats about 50 meters every year. It's sometimes less and sometimes up to 100 meters every year. Glacial retreat has been recorded around the world, and the melting is expected to continue almost everywhere for the rest of the century. But scientists are especially concerned about the water locked into the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. The ice sheet and the, the ice shelves that are located in Antarctica, if that would melt and we would put it into the ocean, the sea level would rise about 58 meters. One study estimates that as much as 1.2 trillion tons of ice melts every single year. When ice melts into the ocean, sea levels don't rise by the same amount everywhere. Glaciers like this one in Iceland have been weighing down on the ground for centuries. The melting here makes those glaciers lighter, putting less pressure on the land underneath. It causes the ground to bounce back in a process called isostatic rebound. So, at least for this part of Iceland, the sea level is getting relatively lower. But all glaciers and ice shelves also have a gravitational effect on the ocean, pulling it towards them. When they melt and lose mass, this pulling power is reduced, and the water flows to the other side of the world, and the sea level rise there is more pronounced. All areas that are low-lying, for example in Bangladesh or the Maldives island, will start to feel this rising sea level because the glaciers are melting. More than 600 million people that live in coastal areas are less than 10 meters above sea level, and some are already seeing disastrous impacts that will significantly worsen with time. Higher sea levels can make storm surges far more destructive, with flooding traveling further inland. They can cause devastating erosion and contaminate habitats for animals and plants. Coastal towns around the world are already building flood defences. Others are relocating, moving to higher ground. The IPCC predicts that even if global warming is kept below 2 degrees, sea levels will keep rising because the glaciers won't stop melting. They are kind of like giants that are kind of moving slowly. Even though we stopped warming, some of the biggest glaciers will take decades and some up to 100 or 200 years to actually adjust to this new temperature. Scientists agree that global warming must be halted by reducing greenhouse gas emissions to avoid the most catastrophic sea level rise. In the meantime, they urge coastal communities to prepare and adapt.